actually not going to do the formal welcome. Um, I'm going to invite up Audrey Siegel from Musqueam, and uh, she is going to welcome us here today. So, Audrey. This language shouldn't exist. My culture shouldn't exist. My people were not intended to be here. Even I, as an indigenous woman, a woman of this land, I'm not supposed to exist, just like you're not supposed to exist. Yet, here we are. spoken since the first sunrise, at least 10,000, some data 16,000 years back, was welcome to the traditional unceded lands of the Musqueam people. My name is Clem Tanot. I am from Musqueam. I am the granddaughter of the late Stephen and Selena August, and it gives me feelings of great joy to be here with you today. People have heard me say these words countless times, but I will assure you that every time I say these words, it doesn't just honor my ancestors, it honors you as well, and your ancestors. Because as I said, we are still here, and there is no stopping us. We, especially the First Nations women across Turtle Island, we know what violence and subjugation and oppression and genocide and the stripping away of our rights, our humanity and our dignity look and feel like. But we also know what it's like to be loved from other women who know what that feels like. We stand here, the First Nations people of Turtle Island, we stand here in solidarity to say, you matter. It's not just your suffering that matters, it's your healing and our moving back to solid ground and strength and solidarity that matters. We are here to support and love in every way possible. We have medicines, we have knowledges, we have teachings, we have heart, and we have voices. And we want to share all of that. We thank you for welcoming us to be here with you. We thank you for making room for us. I see people going so far back now. You, everybody who's here, you're not black. You're part of the healing. You are necessary. You give us support and strength and love. You, you are helping us to create a place that is safe for us to exist. A place that is safe for us to be who we are. So I say Hagsepka again, and I want to remind all of you, Natsamatst, we are one. <laughs> about whether I was going to be able to make it and the, the, the clouds part of the sun came out and my schedule was like I can be there. So I would love to invite you all to sing a song that came to Martina Pierre in a sweat 30 years ago. A song that is sung for strength. A song that is never to be sung in anger. A song that provides hope and love and light to all of us. And I thank each of you who are here leading peacefully with your hearts, despite the violence and the hatred and the racism that is hurled at us every day. I say hi to each of you who, even though we need to defend ourselves, we don't respond with violence. This is important and this is hard to do because how do we keep protecting ourselves from what keeps coming at us? We have 
over 2,000. There are over 4,000 names on the uh, on the missing list of, for women in Canada. A huge percentage of those are First Nations. It is a shame. It's a shame that the governments aren't stepping in every level. It's a shame that more of the elected politicians aren't here. It's a shame that more of the elected First Nations Council reps aren't here. Anyone who represents this genocidal <laughs> colonial government needs to start calling it out. Otherwise, they are willingly accepting the benefits off of the deaths of our people. <laughs> Bus, but when your actions are neglectful to such a point that it's costing people's lives, innocent people's lives, I challenge you, stand up to the system. Change it. Be the change that we need. Change the policies. Change the laws. Get, get your police in check. enforcement anyone who sits with a lawyer's suit or a judge's robe we need you to wake up and stand with us we are willing and capable to lead the way it is only right that we lead the way but we need warriors on every front stomachson i am a warrior we are all warriors here today, and we need warriors on every front to, to ensure that we are all safe, that there is inclusion instead of exclusion, that there is love instead of hate, that there is acceptance instead of racism. And it is possible because my people lived that way for over 10,000 years. It's not just a pipe dream. So each of you keep doing what you do. Keep uniting, keep having your rallies, keep using your dollars to speak. These corporations, these governments, they understand dollars. So let's use our dollars to make those changes. Let's be smart in every way possible. And now for the Women's Warrior song. If anyone has a drum, a rattle, if you, anyone who wants to come up here, I would invite you, other First Nations, other Indigenous people from around the world. Sorry, I, I should have asked for people to come stand with me at the beginning. But now, anybody who is ready, anybody who wants to be here, Wherever you are, you want to stay out there, it's up to you. We're going to do the Women's Warrior song, and you are going to sing also. We're going to clap, we're going to dance, maybe we'll cry, definitely we'll laugh. And we're going to own this. This is our space, this is our land. We have rights, and we will make sure that we are safe. So let's do this.
Um, people are requesting if the ASL interpreter could come up here. Would you be okay with that? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, wow. <laughs> Little bit of housekeeping. Um, as we, as you can see, we do have an ASL interpreter here. Two of them very amazing folks who've come to help us out. Um, if you do need a better sight line of that, we invite you to come here to the front. Um, there's a couple of chairs, and um, if you could give space for those folks to be able to see, that would be great. Thank you so much. Um, so yeah, just going to get started with what I wrote. So. so today, we are feeling so many things. Firstly, we are grateful. We are grateful first and foremost for the generosity, kindness, and unwavering extension of welcome from the Coast Salish First Nations, whose lands we work, organize, and live on. We want to offer more than an acknowledgement because so often they are empty and tokenistic and do not do justice to the ongoing decolonizing work that our indigenous friends and family are doing on a daily basis. Nor does it acknowledge the challenges that indigenous communities, especially here in the urban center of BC, face on a daily basis. Black Lives Matter started as a retaliation to police brutality and state-based racialized violence. Indigenous communities of Turtle Island know these all too well. While we remember black bodies mercilessly taken from us by police brutality, we must also remember the violence that indigenous communities face from the same forces, especially the missing and murdered indigenous women, which Audrey has already spoken about, some of, a, some of whom were taken on the very streets that we stand on today. We'll be donating $100 to the Urban Native Youth Association, and we encourage you to all do the same or similar. Today, we are feeling so many things. We are happy to see everyone here, to feel the warmth of community, of solidarity, of generosity, to look at our bank account and our inboxes and our Facebook page and watch an influx of financial, physical, and emotional support from our community for the work we are doing and for our grief. We are also feeling a lot of confusion and anger and hurt and sadness and despair. Why does it take our bodies to be slain to remind people that black lives matter? Why does it take events 3,000 miles from here for people to commit to anti-blackness in this city? Why does it take the death of us for us to be valued in life? Why must we sacrifice some of our own, our friends, our brothers, our parents, and our children to have a semblance of the acceptance and love that white people have every single day? Today, we are feeling so many things. In 2015, 346 black people were murdered by police in the US. So far in 2016, there have been 187. It's only July. That's halfway through the year. And why should this matter to us here in blissful Canada, in this little mountain sheltered city on the West Coast? Because let me tell you, murder is not the only way that black souls die. <laughs> I have died a thousand times already. Every time you say slavery never happened in Canada, a piece of me dies. Every time you say all lives matter, a piece of me dies. Every time you ask me how I am only in relation to the deaths of my community and never because you care about me on a regular day, a piece of me dies. Every time you share a video on Facebook of someone who looks like my dad or my uncle or my brother being murdered, a piece of me dies. Every time you speak over me, tokenize me, help yourself to my hair, and my body or wear my culture as jewelry, a piece of me dies. How much of me is left now? How much will be left of me by the time I'm 30? Today, we are feeling so many things. In Dallas, several police officers were murdered by a gunman, by someone driven so angry and hateful by the destruction, the systemic erasure, and ongoing demise of our community that they were div driven to reproduce the same violence we are trying to combat. Black Lives Matter has committed itself to non-violent action and has not once wavered on this. We have sat, we have marched, cried, laughed, protested, written, shouted, and gathered, and loved each other, which for some of us is the most dangerous form of resistance. 
We are sad to see that the actions of this individual have been associated with this movement and want to fervently say we do not approve of these crimes and are surprisingly appreciative of the VPD's discreet commitment to our safety. Today we are feeling so many things. The exhaustion of repeated loss and having to always organize around that. But with it, we are feeling for the first time a real sense of community and allyship from our fellow Vancouverites. And for that, we thank you all. Today, we will have a series of poems, speeches, and songs which will help us to heal, grieve, and send away the souls of our recently departed to be with our ancestors. If you take anything away from this event today, let it be this. Black folks, we see you. We love you, and we are here for you. White folks and non-black POC allies, don't let it take another death for us to see you here for us like this. Be here for us in life as you are in death. To Alton Sterling and Philando Castile, to every mother who no longer has a baby, to every child whose father has been lost to murder or the prison industrial complex, to every black woman, black queer, to every black trans person who's died silently somewhere, today we cry for you, and every other day of our lives, we will fight for you. Thank you. alluded to just now, there are many names that we don't get to hear about. There are many people who have died at the hands of police that we will never know the names of, and uh, many of those are women, black women, black trans folks, whose names just don't make it into the media. We hear about the black men, but um, as an organizing group, actually, we are made up of black women and black queer folks, and so what I want to do now is I want to say the names of the women who we lost to police violence last year in the US. So what I will do is I will say, I will say, say her name, and then I'm gonna read out a name, and then after that, after each name, I would ask that you would also say, say her name uh, along with me, and then I will continue to read this list of names that I have. And these are the reported names. These are the names that we could find. They are probably not all the names. Um, there are many more that are happening every day. Uh, and every day we just get more names to add to this list and it's it's not okay. So say her name, Betty Jones. Say her name. Tiara Thomas. Say her name. Trundra Weaver. Say her name. India Kagar. Say her name. Sandra Bland. Say her name. Nuna LaRoche. Say her name. LaShonda Ruth Belk. Say her name. Natasha McKenna. Say her name. 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 Because black lives matter. Black lives? Matter! Black lives? Matter! Black lives? Matter! Before we share a moment of silence for Alton Sterling, Philando Castile, and all our black sisters and brothers across the border who died by the bullets of a gun and by an implicit or explicit bias that read their black skin as already confessing to the crime, take a look around. Notice the magnitude of this crowd. This is your community of black and non-black allies. And you have an opportunity here to connect with people of shared experiences. And I hope that we all rise to that opportunity. For we are our siblings keepers after all. And that is why we must hold others accountable for the reaping of black lives. Black men are being hunted and we are haunted in return. So to our black family, I repeat, you are not alone. You are not alone. We see you, we honor you, and we stand with you as you stand with us. Through life and through death, through grief and through love. Now let's restore some human dignity to all those departed by mourning them together. It is a collective loss. Let's share a moment of silence. And if you have a candle, feel free to light it now.
Thank you. May they rest in power. Next, I'd like to invite up Kombi from the African Great Lakes Association. Hello, everyone. Hello. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. I am standing here today. I want to, to do before I even start to speak, I have a petition that is organized by Daniel. It's, it needs to be signed. We want to support the refugees. We want to support the refugees all over who are in need. Yes, thank you for Canada. They have accepted us, but we still feel that it's not doing enough. We need a little more. We are not running away from our countries. Canada, other countries are pushing us to run away from our own countries. That is why we are here. Please come out and sign the petition. It, I'm going to hand it over to Daniel. Daniel was supposed to speak, but he's not able. Daniel is emotionally not able. So please look for Daniel, sign the petition. Thank you, I'll go back to my speech. Like always in Africa, we are never in a hurry, so bear with me. from Africa, my mother tongue, and the few languages that we are supposed to talk while we are back in Africa. So I will read the English that I was forced to read and write. <laughs> I am honored to be here today with you. When I was sitting on the computer at my workplace around 11.30, my son, the second born, called me and said, Mommy, one of us is gone. I said, what do you mean, Daniel? He said, yeah, they've killed our brother. Can you, Mommy, quickly go and put it on Facebook? We want the world to know. I checked it out, and yes, it had happened. I had a bad night thinking about the killing of the late Alton Sterling a tear rolled as a mother of sons. Suddenly, when I saw that video of Philado, the first thing on my mind was, yes, let me share with the world. Because it had just happened 24 hours after the first shooting. So I put it on my Facebook for the video to be today. And I'm so happy I'm very happy that the Black Lives Matter had to come by my side and hold me. Here we stand together as one. I am so proud of everyone who made it here to be in solidarity with our neighbor in the South. Thank you again. Driving or walking while black, my only sin is my skin. What did I do to be black? We are always mistaken for some things, like clothes we wear. 
maybe the affiliation we are affiliated to the gang or political party etc in towns we live straight streets have rules we face challenges of trying to master these rules we have to learn to be alert to surrounding dangers we face the level of inequalities no longer sustainable live our lives in vulnerability our traditions have been far have been to fight with the system since life of walking has its own rules we all the time learn how to walk these streets we are more removed from the city yes we are yet to arrive since the shooting of the 18 year old michael brown that was the first vigil that i did at the strat corner uh, hogan's alley in 2014. i had 300 people who attended and when we go back and look at what happened he was killed by darren wilson who was 28 then this just adds more wounds and death, suffering and fear. The white police who killed this boy stayed in employment and voluntarily signed, resigned only for four months, nearly four months after the shooting. He's a free American citizen today with no criminal record, no restrictions, no destruction in his life. Shame. Shame. We people of African descent are still dreaming and searching for hope. We have to forge out our own and chart a clear... No hurry. <laughs> a clear determining course of action in order to be more just. In order to be more than just a mere footnote in world history it's up to black unity black solidarity to take action like a really tribe when we are under attack we globally have been creeping with number of critical questions the fundamental question confronting us since our enslavement and the colonization in territories held by usa government to what extent can black people be the agent of instruments of their own liberation and history? This is clear that we are merely being the object of or attachment of someone else's project and history that only leads to this possible future. Why are our people being haunted and killed every 28 hours? Why don't black people seem not to matter to societies? What can and must we do? Oh, I hope these killers are not behind this. <laughs> lost but let's let's be together again why are our people being haunted and killed in every every 28 hours why don't black people seem not to matter the societies what can we do to end these attacks and liberate ourselves we are still going on the basis of what we experienced we were conditioned and we are still suffering from self-hate because of this self-hate there was to be a teaching from the alike of Martin Luther King, Mandela and the rest, that would allow us to fall in love once again with ourselves and have self-respect. I know as well as you do that when fear and anger becomes collective, it becomes extremely dangerous and overwhelming. We need the courage to express ourselves even when the majority are going opposite directions. Because of change, of direction because a change of direction can only happen when there is a collective awakening awakening 
we realized that system was built to divide, weaken and destroy us. The more we unite, learn from each other about who we really are and learn how we get there, the more we will stand strong in unity. Yeah. There has been no war that our people have not fought and died on the front line. There is no job that we have never done. No tax levied against us that we have never paid. And our freedom has always been conditional here. They keep telling, they keep telling us that we are free. Freedom is always coming and the year after. But that year after is a hassle. We have never seen democracy in America. All we have seen is hypocrisy. We don't see an American dreams. We only see experience. We only experience American nightmares. The world today suffer a lot, not only because violence and action of bad people, but also the silence and the inaction of you people. <coughs> if you will be silent, if you are not taking an action, you are as good. What happened people of African descent all over the world we are the people who never tells our own story our story is told by Europe America the CNN <laughs> Radio Deutsche Welle we are not made to celebrate our own culture and history but Hollywood culture if we can start to begin to make a contribution, we should start to think. The simple question that I'm asking all of you, are we thinking? I am standing here today very proud to what is happening today. Don't be bored with me. I know you love my color. <laughs> I will just add on what Audrey Sige say to you today. I was crying in my house when I asked her to come and officiated this. I said, Audrey, come. She said, call me, I'm divided. I said, give me a minute, just come past there and go. She said, call me, don't pressure me. <laughs> I said, Audrey, you are my sister and I want you there. And then I put up the phone. I came late, so disappointed. I didn't know who was coming to do it. I got here. Audrey was on top of this stone I'm standing on. <laughs> Wherever you are, okay, Audrey. Any other at heart, thank you. Thank you for being there for us. This movement will continue. Honestly, like she said, if you are not taking any action, you are not helping us. If you are not taking any action, you are not being part of us. I have a lot to say, to share, say, Vancouver has been a city that was started by a black man who is nowhere to be seen. And if I'm lying to you, we have people here who can say it, that uh, Vancouver, the families, that started Vancouver as a city were the families from Afri people of African descent. When I learned that, because when we arrive here, we are, we are told, go to Westminster, that is where you belong. That is where your church is. 
I don't know if they know they build it there or they're just asking us to go there. Yeah? <laughs> the church that we built in 19, that we bought in 1917 in Vancouver on Hogan's Alley stands today as a house. A shame, a big shame to the city of yeah. Vancouver for not protecting that institution. Yeah. Yeah. restored I plus four more people of African descent not the original who were born here because we can't get them and I will never stand to wait until they come I will I started we restored the church we are meeting at Strathcona Community Center every Sunday today at three th at three to five we pay to stay there it's restored why am I talking about the church today? I want you guys to go back in your computers and look at why I'm talking about this church today. It was a community center for black people. It was a place that Jim Hendrix's grandmother bought. We bought with our own sweat. The boys worked on the railway line and they bought that church. It's no longer ours. We don't know where it is. No contribution was paid by white people, nothing. The money was paid Today, by I'm standing here to say the church is back. <laughs> go back to, go back to 1922 to 1923. There was a, a trial by somebody, Fred Deal. He was a railroad porter who was charged by killing a Vancouver police constable, Robert Macbeth. Yeah. That congregation, the Fountain Chapel, mobilized and ensured the likelihood deal was rashly jacketed by police, was accounted for in the verdict. Consequently, the case was retried, and the deal's origin death sentence was reduced to life imprisonment. So look at what that church did. Can we come together and have something? I want you guys to support us. When you see these girls doing something like this, they're not doing because they have money. They just came from universities. So they need your support and your prayers. And I want prayers from you to me and the rest. Thank you very much. And sorry, I took you. Serenity when your home is feeling 
Love everybody feels with your hopeful wings. Feel serenity when you're holding me. Walla Zaydan, and I am from Iraq. I'm a poet myself. Uh, I'm one of the voices that's standing here today for Black Lives Matter. And, <laughs> and can we please remember, because I'm from Iraq, I just want to stand for the 300 lives that we've lost back in Iraq. It was one of the deadliest terrorist attacks that happened in 2016. So I wrote a poem, I finished it last night, or well, morning, at 5 a.m. Um, Oh, it's a tribute for uh, Alton Sterling and the black community and the Iraqis. So it's called Unified. I hope you like it. Okay. I've given every last word to this hungry mic. It has eaten up all of my emotions. My brain has become nothing but an empty white room filled with demonic voices echoing Sandra Balan's name screaming, my hands are up, please don't shoot. And I keep constantly thinking, where's the truth buried? My thoughts are trapped into these four walls built by guns and bullets, put up by men in police uniforms, decorated by Alton Sterling's blood. I carry his name and the other 623 innocent bodies on my shoulders. I carry the unheard and the innocent. I carry the injustice and oppressed. I carry the blood that filled Baltimore and Baghdad cities. I carry the roots of racism that's wrapped and attached to my veins. My body has become so numb and weak from carrying the world. Holding on to my every pain, I also carry your pain because when I see them, I see us. Yeah. We belong in the same game. This is ours. We begged for freedom until it evaded us. We've been running after hope, but death runs after us with a hanging rope, only to find our voices hung. My words have given up on me. My tongue has become my tongue has become my own enemy, but I still won't be silent. That's why when I speak, I speak to Alma Rice, Seam Bell, Troy, Davis, Freddie, Oscar, Michael, Betty Jones, Leroy Browning. I speak them all. There are a unified voices unheard. Only the coffins, only the coffins, their bodies are buried in, knows their name. I saw their dead souls rising alive, yelling Black Lives Matter. They said Black Lives Matter. I say Black Lives Matter. Our soul says Black Lives Matter. Matter. The pavement, their blood pulled onto says Black Lives Matter. The gun, the police shot, the fate of bullets says Black Lives Matter. The tendons and ligaments, the finger of the policeman that pulled the trigger of the gun says Black Lives Matter. So we say Black Lives Matter. They all live inside me. Every night they crawl out of my throat, scream, set me free. With every breath, my lungs inhale entrapment. Exhale injustice and restlessness. Infuses into my bloodstream, not oxygen, but the will to make it stop. Inject us with brutality toward the undeserving. My heart will pump the life blood of our movement. Our heart will carry our voices unified. Woo! Thank you. Woo! That adjective sticks me like a switchblade every time I think about it. It's like the way that I flex a complex sentence is unnatural for someone of my skin color. It's not enough that I rap, slam, play ball, and yay tall. No, being black has more to do with the bad rap I listen to. How low my pants sag, the amount of times I say swag, and an endless list of other traits that will mortify you have seen on kids of other colors. It's like a well-to-do brother that got raised right is a rarity, has got to be washed white. Because there's no way in hell a black dude could be doing well or be more groomed for success than a jail cell. Yeah. Please. Don't now I'm going to direct this message at them, but they are us. I want us to all know that I see you. I see your beauty. 
I see your love and I see your strength. Can we say that together? I see your beauty, I see your love, and I see your strength. Can you say that to these women and to each other? I see your beauty, I see your love, and I see your strength. Now, are you guys okay to stand up here with me? Okay, I'll need your support. This song, they've asked, um, they've asked me to sing a song that um, is a gorgeous song, but it's a very difficult one so to sing. Um, Sam Cooke, wrote Change is Gonna Come over 50 years ago. And it's heartbreaking that we're still singing the song. But what's important about it is that to those of us that are doing this work, we still have work to do. So you have to take care of yourselves and each other because change is gonna come. All right, I'm gonna get myself my note because otherwise I'm gonna sing all kinds of weird things. <laughs> I was born by the river in a little tent and oh, just like the river I've been running ever since. It's been a long... I'm really validating our experience as black people, as black people in this city, to see the solidarity, to see the community, the generosity with which everyone has come here today, volunteers bringing snacks and water, all the signs that people have made. Please don't forget this moment, don't forget the community that we created here today. Don't forget the people who have died at the hands of police brutality. Always remember them, always remember each other. And please continue to support Black Lives Matter, both here in Vancouver and internationally. We acknowledge that we are in a somewhat privileged situation being in a city like this where we can do a call out and we can have such a peaceful and supportive community come and celebrate with us. And we need to continue to do work so that Black Lives Matter chapters in other cities can also have these same experiences. As we mentioned, we will be sending... We will be sending a care package to the families of Alton Sterling and Philando Castile and hopefully in time we can continue to do that each time this happens because we know this is not the last time. So if you have something to donate, please come and speak to us afterwards. We're arranging a drop-off location. We're gonna be sending that out this week. It's just a small token that we can offer those families at this moment and we're continuing to learn about ways in which we can support black communities in cities and in spaces where it's even harder, where it's even more violent and it's even more dangerous for them to continue to do work like the work that we're doing here. So this is the end of the official part of our event. Thank you again for everybody who's come out and shown your support.